In the last video, we learned that a standing wave, shown in blue, uh, green, <laughs> what color is this? A standing wave is nothing more than the resultant of two traveling waves. The two waves that are traveling, they're going in opposite directions, they're identical, and there are moments where they totally overlap, like this. So I want to look at the question, how do we produce antinodes? Here's an antinode. And the antinode is the location of particles that go to maximum displacement. So this particle goes all the way down to the negative maximum displacement. And then it travels all the way back up. And yet other particles, like the one right about here, maybe, if I can mark this, do a good job of marking, those are nodes. This is the location of a node because this particle doesn't move at all. So let's watch that. Okay, let's start the simulation again. So this particle stays in the same spot while the others move. Antinodes and nodes. But how do we form the antinode? How do we form this node? What causes these things to arise? That's what I want to look at. Consider this. Antinodes go really high and really low. So we have to have constructive interference, right? Nodes never go anywhere. So these two traveling waves have to be canceling out at a node. Nodes are locations of destructive interference. Let's watch the simulation and see if this makes sense. At the antinode, at this location, the waves always add together. And at this location, right here, the waves always cancel out. To help us see that, I've marked a, uh, the same antinode, but I've got a different node, and I've added a line going all the way up through the, uh, the top graph. And look at what happens. Let's watch this in slow-mo. I'll pause the video at various moments, and we'll check to see. Is there constructive interference here? Is there destructive interference here? Let's watch. Okay, let's start here. At this point, the blue is negative displacement. The red wave is also negative, so that's constructive at the antinode. Here, blue is pointing down, negative displacement, but red is up. So the node has destructive interference. Okay, I let a little time pass. Right here, the waves are almost on top of each other, but look, you still have, on the, at the antinode, red and blue are both negative. That's constructive interference. Red is positive, blue is down or negative displacement, so that's destructive. So again, we have constructive at the antinode, destructive at the node. Let's let it pass. Okay, at this moment, these are still constructive interference. Their displacements are at the same, are both negative at this location of the antinode. Here, the displacements are opposite. One is up, one is down. So destructive for the node. And it doesn't matter when you, uh, what moment you consider. Even here, we could say we're adding together the zero displacements. So we have constructive interference at the antinode. And we have complete, total destructive interference here. And so there is nothing at this point, this location. So what we've learned is it does not matter what moment you choose. You could pause the video at any moment, and there will always be destructive interference at the node and constructive interference at the antinode. So you always have destructive at the node, and you always have constructive at the antinode. Let's make a note of that in our notes. How are antinodes and nodes formed? Nodes are locations where the two traveling waves always interfere destructively. Which means that's where they always cancel. They cancel out. 
On the other hand, antinodes are locations in the medium, locations on the string, where the two traveling waves always interfere constructively. They don't cancel, they add together. So now we understand how nodes and antinodes form, and it has to do with interference between the two traveling waves.